Okay, here we are gaming once again on Linux Kubuntu. Today we're playing X-Plane 12, which just came out September 16th, 2020, so just a few days ago. We're going to be playing it on Linux Kubuntu, and it's the 20.04 LTS version. And we're not using the Logitech F310 gamepad to play. We're actually using the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro joystick. It also has a little throttle, so it makes it easy to play Flight Simulator games. So we'll go ahead and get it started here. I did have an issue installing this, or not installing, but actually playing this game. My Mesa drivers were not updated to what the game wanted. I'll probably make a completely separate video on that, but we'll go ahead and get started here. We're going to try the Cessna Skyhawk with the floats. And we're going to try in Orlando, Florida and try to take off and see if we can fly around the area, see what the game looks like, and see if there's any improvements. And okay, that's kind of weird. It's given us an error about scenery and it plopped us in the middle of a lake where the Orlando International Airport should be. So that's kind of strange. Well, at least we're in a float plane, so we'll see if we can go ahead and take it off. What probably happened, I think there is actually a free download of the North American maps. So if this doesn't work, well, I may just exit the game, download that, fire it back up, and see if we can take off. But just to see what happens, I'll see if we're able to get airborne in this. So I'll go ahead and put the flaps down, throttle up check the controls and see if we can actually take off in this. The landing gears are down and I already noticed something goofy. My throttle was reversed. So that's kind of weird. Set it to my profile I created. Okay, let's try this one more time. Alright, so it is moving. It's just acting extremely goofy. It thinks... It's like there's half water or half land, so it's handling extremely weird. We're picking up speed, though. Let's see if we can get airborne. And, nope, I guess we're just getting smoked out. Okay, so this is clearly not working, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to quit the game, go into the Steam Workshop, see if I can find the North American Maps upload, and I'll see you guys back once I download that and get it installed. Okay, so it looked like that worked. I went to the Steam Workshop, downloaded the North American maps. It was gigantic. It took about an hour to download. It was about 14 gigabytes, but we're here again at the Orlando Airport, this time on tarmac, not in the middle of a random lake. So let's try and take off again. So we'll do a quick controls check, put our flaps down, throttle up, and see if we can head towards the Disney World area. We'll fly around there. I know on X-Plane 11 I did a very similar video to this. They didn't model a Disney World at all, but this one they may, so we'll fly over towards that area. I believe it's southwest of this airport. So we'll head that way, see what we can see. So we'll put our flaps up here, put our gears that are getting stored inside the pontoons. I'll try to keep it pretty low to the ground because I think it's a little more interesting to watch. You get to see the cars moving around. And I'm still just learning the new X-Plane 12 systems. I can already tell, it looks like the map is a little bit updated. Which is good. Overall, the graphics improvement improvements have been great. The plane models look really good. As you can see, the scenery looks really good also. That's one thing I didn't check was my graphic settings. It ran great right out of the box. I was afraid if I cranked them up, it may blow up my system, especially since I'm screen recording at 1080p 30fps. So we'll go ahead, dive down. We'll keep pretty low and check out the scenery as we're heading toward the Disney World area. Keep our map pulled up here to make sure we're going in the right direction. We're heading southeast, southwest rather. So as long as we keep heading this direction, we should start seeing things. I can already tell just by looking at the scenery, it already looks a lot better than X-Plane 11 does. There's a lot more cars on the road. It's way more dense. And I'll check out the cockpit too. I haven't really looked at that much. 
I don't see too much difference in the cockpit. So I'm not sure if there's much difference there. I did notice too, just the handling of the aircrafts feels a lot better than an X-Plane 11. I can't really describe it. They feel more snappy, I guess would be the best word to describe it. And I guess while we're headed, it'll take a few minutes to get to Disney World, so while we're headed over there, I'll tell you how I bought this game. It's $60 on Steam, it's early access, and it came out September 16th. So it's only been out for a few days. I didn't even know it came out until I randomly looked it up the other day. So I hurried up, bought, paid the full $60 for it, and downloaded it. I think the initial download was about 27 gigabytes. And of course I just downloaded the editions, which were about 14. So it's, it's not a small game. Neither was X-Plane 11. And I'm sure once it goes into full development, it's going to be even larger. But from what I can tell, it, it looks similar to X-Plane 11, just upgraded graphics. The menus and everything, at least. I'm trying to see, too, when I get low enough, you can almost read the street signs. I think my refresh ratio is a little too low to actually pick them up. I bet if I pause the video, I can actually go back frame by frame and actually read the signs, but... I'm not sure what uh, what FPS I'm getting now. It's probably around 40 or 50. I don't think I'm getting the true 60 FPS. If I wasn't screen recording, I might be. We'll keep our sectional chart pulled up here to make sure I can see exactly where I'm going. I'm trying to head towards that KDWS. I think that is the airport right inside of Disney World. Yeah, I'm still amazed by how the scenery looks. It's not quite as good as Microsoft Flight Simulator, but of course you can't play Microsoft Flight Simulator on Linux. This is kind of our only choice, and I was really excited when this came out, so I'm sure it's only going to get better with time. I've heard horror stories of people playing Microsoft Simulator on Linux, so this is kind of our only option. So we'll go ahead and we'll buzz this highway here. This looks really good. I'm trying to get close to those street signs to see if I can read them. I just ran through some power lines. It's a good thing the game didn't model that, otherwise we would have had a really bad time. Let's see if we can get low here and make out some of the signs. It's close. You can almost do it. I bet if I pause the video and go back frame by frame, I can probably make out what they're saying. They look like real legitimate road signs, which is good. And we're almost there. We'll pass over this nice looking lake. I did notice before I downloaded this, the water looked a heck of a lot better. Which is nice. It also, I don't know if they had this in X-Plane 11 previously, but they added almost wave and aquatic noises as you're resting on the water. So that was a nice touch too. So my plan for once we reach Disney and see if it's actually modeled or not, I'm not sure if they actually will, is to, just to speed it up a little bit, we'll pick a fighter jet. I think when I was selecting the planes, I think they had an F-14 Tomcat, so that's interesting. I don't think X-Plane 11, at least the vanilla game, had that, so I'll be, that should be fun to try out and see how that handles. And since it's an F-14 Tomcat, I wonder if they will actually model the folding back of the wings once you get to a certain speed. So that'll be interesting to see also. Yeah, I'm looking at the map here, I'm confused. I don't know if... I'm just making sure I took off at the right airport. It looks like we did, so... Alright, so that's something I've never seen before in X-Plane 11. They have golf courses modeled. And they even have the, they have the greens, and I think I saw a flag inside the pin, so that's pretty cool. Now this could be the golf course inside the Disney Resort, I'm not 100% sure. 
I know we're getting pretty darn close. We're in the area. This may be part of it here. It looks like it may not be modeled. I don't know if that's because my graphics settings are not cranked or maybe they just chose not to model it. I'm pretty sure I saw a YouTube video on Microsoft Flight Simulator. I think Microsoft Flight Simulator actually does model Disney World. So it'll be interesting to see if X-Plane 12 also does. Yeah, think straight ahead. That is the airport. So we definitely, I'm almost positive we flew over Disney, so it looks like they probably didn't model it. So what I'll do, once we get past this airport, I'll make a left turn. And just for fun, we'll try to land on the highway and get really close and see how the modeled cars look. Okay, so I'll go ahead and cut the power. We'll make a super steep banked left turn. Put the flaps down and put the gears down. And we'll get right on this highway over here and see if we can land. It's getting pretty squirrely. See how they modeled a power line right in the middle of the highway. Getting pretty close here. Make sure not to run into those road signs. And pull up. Nice touchdown. We'll hit the brakes. Once we straighten her out. And boom, right into a bus and right into a tractor trailer. Okay, so what I'll do now, I will we'll take off from the same airport. I'll see if I can find the F-14 Tomcat in the selection. Try to take off from there. And we'll play around with that for a little bit. So we'll go ahead and shut this off, pop the door, see if that's still modeled good. Yeah, it looks fine. Okay, so let's try this Orlando flight one more time. We're in the F-14 Tomcat now. Let's try to get an exterior view and see what it looks like from the outside. Nice. The engines look pretty cool. Let's rev them up to see what they do. Check the controls, we'll put our flaps down. We'll crank the throttle and see how this thing handles. Like I said before, I don't think this was in the original X-Plane 11, the vanilla version at least. I never bought any of the expansion packs. I'm pretty sure they added more planes, but this is the first time flying this. So let's see if we can pull up and fly around. Alright, we're airborne, so let's put our flaps up and the gears up. And you forget how fast these things are. Especially if they're coming from flying a Cessna. They're extremely snappy. And I guess we'll just head over towards the same area we did with the Cessna. So we'll make a tight right turn here. We'll probably get to the Disney area in about a minute or so because of course this thing is traveling 10 times the speed. I'm curious to see if they model the swept back wings once it gets to a certain speed. I don't know if it's something it does automatically or if I have to actually go inside the cockpit and press a button. But we'll try to buzz the ground here. Still looks pretty good. I say one of the biggest changes I've seen front X-Plane 11 to 12 is the feel of the aircraft. It feels a little more, like I said before, snappy, I guess is the best way to describe it. Yep, we're making good time. I have the throttle cranked and I haven't seen... The wings aren't moving yet. Maybe you have to be at a certain elevation. Yeah, see, there's the golf course, I believe. Redding out a little bit there. Okay, I think I just saw the wings move. Yep, okay, they so they're fully swept back now. Whoa. It is getting kind of squirrely. Doesn't like doing bank turns like that. There we go. Those oscillations flattened out. As my poor guy slowly blacking out. Yep, 
yeah, so I'll probably do the same thing with this. Uh, once I get done playing around with here, I will put the gear down. I'll try to land on a highway just for fun. And that'll probably be the end of the video. So overall, it's up to you guys. I don't know if it's worth $60 yet. Like I said, it's still in early access. But of course, they're going to slowly add more content over time. While I was in the Steam Workshop, I noticed too, there wasn't just the North American maps I could have downloaded. There was, I think, four or five other global maps you could download too. So of course, that's going to take up even more space. The North American maps was something like 14 gigabytes. I didn't check the size of those, but I'm sure they're also massive. So, here we are. We're trying to still bleed off some speed before we can actually land on one of these highways. We're still going way too fast. I'll put the gears down, see if that'll slow us down any. I'll make a left turn to try to follow this highway. And she's slowly starting to stall. I'm going to have to throttle back up. I thought I had enough straight highway to land, but I guess I didn't. We'll give it a little bit of throttle here. And we're getting close. She's getting squirrely, run right into the power lines. Almost touched down. And it should be good. Nice. And like I said before too, so this is running on Linux Kubuntu, and it's the 20.04 LTS version. You may have issues if you use the, I believe it's 22 point something, it's whatever they call jam and jellyfish, because when I first try to get this to work the mesa driver update tool i don't think works with jam and jellyfish so that may be an issue for you i would try to stay with the long-term support 20.04 kubuntu version if you can because all i had to do was run a couple commands and update of my mesa drivers fine so that should be about it thanks for watching